So, today we're gonna repair this beautiful anger grinder, which clearly saw better days before. I bought it for around 2 euros, knowing that it has some malfunctions. And yes, I know, I'm a genius for giving up money for trash. Anyway, see this button here? I think this might be the problem. Just watch. Theoretically, this should be fixed to a sort of stick which leads to the switch, so I will start with that first. First of all, you need to unscrew these four screws, and in my case, the last one will be a bit challenging, but anyway. Actually, you don't have to do this, because in an ideal world, it will be enough to unscrew these four screws instead, but again, in my case, I don't have enough space to do that, so I need to do this extra step in order to remove this part first. So let's do this! A quick side note. If you never tried to fix anything by yourself before, I would strongly recommend to try it once. Because most of the time the problem is very simple and easy to fix. But instead we like to throw away functioning stuff just because we have no idea how to repair them. And this is sad. Yep, as I thought. This would be a problem. So, how to remove a strip bed screw? There are some easy options like taking a hammer and the pointy metal, not a screwdriver, and hammer it counterclockwise, but I have nothing similar here, so I went to the brute force method, using this very fancy star hexagonal screw bit. You know, sometimes asking nice is not an option. And voila, mission complete. At this point this upper part should pop out by pulling. Now we have four more screws to unscrew. This upper part should pop out by pulling. But in my case this was actually unnecessary and for some reason it doesn't work either. I pulled out the whole motor with the case, which you should actually avoid because first it would be better to remove the tension from the carbon brushes by pushing the springs aside and by doing so the motor will just come out easily. But yeah, anyway, this is the first time I disassembling an anger grinder, so yep. So, if you watch carefully, now you can see that the switch button, so the downside of it, is not connected to this switch rod. In my case, I need to pop the button inside this rod, but there are also some other models which uses some other connection types, so just be careful not to break it at this point if you came so far already. To open the downside is actually very easy, there is only just this one little screw holding it. This is one of the two little springs I told you about. You simply need to push this aside so that the little carbon brush can move freely. After which you can remove the motor or put it back again. Just remember to put the springs also back afterwards, otherwise the motor will not work. And this is this famous switch rod, which needs to be connected with the switch button. So, you push the switch rod as far as it goes. Then you hold it with one of your fingers, and on the other side you try to force the switch button inside the switch rod. Now is the switch button connected to the rod. It's not wobbly anymore, and now if you try to use it, it will also move the switch rod, which will actually turn on the real switch. So, mission completed. Now it's time to clean this bad boy, but just a little bit.
After the very professional cleaning, the unit will be reassembled again. At this point it would be nice to use some grease, but I don't have any at home right now, so I will do it later on off screen. After putting the screws halfway back, I like to use an X pattern to tighten them up. The same rule would also be applied for this piece, but I have only three working original screws, so I will put them first, and then I will use a substitute just for the moment, but I will change this later on off screen as well. Actually, before you put the whole thing back together, it would make sense to try the thing out first, of course with percussion, so in case something went wrong you don't need to open the whole thing up again, but I was so sure that this was the problem that I just forget about it. Luckily I was right and now I get a functioning angle grinder for just 2 euros. Nice! 